This is the A.E. Staley Sagamore cogeneration facility, which will be capable of supplying 190,000 pounds an hour of steam at 685 PSIG and 750 degrees Fahrenheit. The plant will be capable of developing at least 7,415 KW at full throttle flow. Okay, now you see a truck pulling in to unload on its load of coal on top of the Grizzly. Now you're seeing the <coughs> truck being dumped by a hydraulic cylinder. The boiler is designed to fire all of the specified coals. It is noted, however, that it will be necessary to add a dry scrubber system for future firing of high sulfur coal. This Presley is divided up into openings that's approximately three inches wide and five inches long. Okay, what we have here is a storage bunker for the pulverizers. We have one for each pulverizer that holds approximately 200 tons of coal or a day's supply of coal. The coal discharges out of the bottom of the bunker valve down through this slide gate, which is called the bunker slide gate, travels on down through this conduit and discharges directly on top of the belt located inside this stock gravimetric feeder. What we are now looking at as a window at the end of the stock gravimetric feeder and through it we can see the coal containing upwards to 8% moisture as it discharges directly down into the Williams pulver. This pipe is connected with the discharge of the stock gravimetric feeder comes down through this pipe and down into the mill. The noise you're hearing is the coal coming from inside the floor and inside the conduit. Okay, the coal then enters the grinding chamber inside the mill where it's then ground up. Mill bottom discharge permits continuous removal of iron pyrites, slate, and in particular tramp metal simultaneously with the grinding operation. Some product beneficiation is possible by the removal of the hardest to grind materials that accumulate at the bottom of the semi-fluid bed at the base of the mill. Removal of pyrites and tramp metal and slag producing impurities are possible by periodic dumping as shown here. the gearbox now and as you can see the mill is in operation there's absolutely no noise coming from the mill itself the noise you are hearing is from the gearbox The primary air supply for this DF mill enters by way of this insulated duct here. It comes inside the wind box. Circles the entire mill and comes through. It 
inlets throughout the the circumference of the mill. The air then sweeps inside the grinding chamber, flows up through, lift the material with it, up through to the spinner separator, where the material is classified. Directly above the DF-52 pulverizer is the spinner separator. This separator is used to control the product fineness to 80 to 90 percent minus 200 mesh. Now come through this pipe from the pulverizer, down, up, into the exhaust fan. Coal in there, then come out of the exhauster past the temperature probe into the splitter valve. The splitter valve distributes the coal to the two pipes above it through the burner safety shutoff valves. The coal is then transported out through these pipes through the burners. The coal inlet pipe. The coal in primary air comes down the pipe and enters the burner in a swirling motion and travels into the furnace. The coal comes in at a 2.3 to 1 air to coal ratio. The air transports the coal and delivers it into the combustion zone where it mixes with secondary air, which comes in from above through a large area called the wind box. The air and coal mixture mixed in the furnace zone are ignited by the igniter, which is fed to this igniter tube with natural gas. At a stable load of approximately 40%, the igniter is taken out of service, and the coal is self-sustaining. Uh, when the coal is self-sustaining, the excess air to the unit is approximately four to four and a half percent. The boiler is capable of supplying 190,000 pounds per hour of steam at 685 PSIG and 750 degrees Fahrenheit and developing at least 7,415 kilowatts per hour at full throttle flow. The coke will next be dried from the 15% moisture down to 0.3% moisture as it is being ground to 90% minus 325 mesh. Coke offers several advantages for use as a lime kiln fuel. The primary advantage is cost savings when compared to natural gas and number six fuel oil. The high heat content of petroleum coke also adds to its attractiveness. Coke usually runs about 14,000 BTUs per pound. Once the material is fine enough, it travels out the classifier, on the top of it, across through the, the 19 inch diameter pipe, travels into the exhauster. Once it reaches the exhauster, it's then picked up, transported directly up to the kiln by way of this 18 inch diameter pipe. What you should be able to see is a, 
a black area called the fuel plume. This is an area of unburned coke just prior to ignition. You may also be able to view streaks in the black coke plume, which are jets of natural gas that are being used to sustain the combustion of the coke. At the end of the black area or plume, ignition occurs and is extremely radiant in color, similar to an oil fire. The fire itself appears to be well defined. Uh, we're looking at the number two lime kiln, and uh, lime is producing at about a rate of 250 tons a day. The lime is approximately at the hot end. 2200 degrees. The cold end temperature is about 560 degrees. Installation of the petroleum coke system for the number two lime kiln is a major step for this mill and the paper industry in general. Although petroleum coke has its disadvantages, the advantages outweigh the potential problems. Coke is stored in the coke bunker above the feeder. The coke falls onto the feeder when the coke valve is open. There is a Level Art 1000 detector which indicates when this pipe is clogged. The coke falls onto the feeder. This is a Merrick gravimetric feeder. Once on the belt, it is weighed. The coke drops off the end of the belt, where it free falls down into the pulverizer. There is another indicator here, which indicates when this pipe is clogged. OK, this is a line where the material enters the pulverizer. It comes directly from beneath the way belt feeder drops down through the stainless steel pipe and goes directly into the bottom of the grinding chamber. At this time, we'll take a listen at the mill so we can hear it in operation. Sound of the gear reducer. And the sound of the 300 horsepower Seaman Alice motor. Now as the feet is ground up, the feed is lifted up by air into our classifier. The, the fine material passes on through and the coarser products are knocked back down for regrinding. Once the material is fine enough, it leaves the classifier through that large 24-inch pipe that we'll call our product line. It comes on around the 90, down as you follow the line, on end to the exhauster. The exhauster conveys the material on up through the pneumatically controlled coke valve and on up into the uh, diverter valve. Bingo.
The Coke and Airstream is split into two by this splitter. It's split into two streams, one on the right and one on the left. Each of these streams is again split into two, giving a total of four separate Coke and Air streams. This is the burner elevation. Uh, we have two main burner, burner levels. Upper main gun and the lower main gun is located at the bottom. In the center we have our pilot and our uh, natural gas elevation. Natural gas comes in from the side. This is the elevation where the coke is blown in. What you are now looking at is a coke flame as depicted by the black sections that is interspersed between that is being burned on both top and bottom. This scope is being introduced at a rate of 22,000 pounds per hour by means of four burners located tangentially around this combustion engineering tangentially fired boiler. The coat has been burned a ground to a fineness of 90% minus 200 mesh. The ash content measured at the bag house is measured at 99% burnout with only 1% carbon. The handheld terminal, you can use this terminal to adjust the mill parameters for instance, to adjust the fineness of the grind or the, uh, the delta pressure that's in the mill. You can also use this device to monitor any of the parameters of the mill, including delta pressure, mill speed, and others. A diagram showing the present status of the mill. It shows the most important of the mill parameters, uh, and it also graphically shows the mill and the various motors. Uh, for instance, this is the mill motor. It's running at 74 RPM. Uh, delta pressure here is about six inches. This also shows the spinner motor, which is at 55 RPM presently, and the exhaust fan. Okay. Outlet temperature here is 200 degrees Fahrenheit. The inlet is 325 degrees. We are feeding coke at a rate of 13,400 pounds per hour at this time. We're drawing a little over 200 amps on the mill motor. Daily arrivals of coal trucks dump their loads at this scale and stockpiling area. The two inch by zero coal unloads through a grizzly and is conveyorized to stockpile as shown to the upper right, or continues on up the primary crusher house in the center building. Output from the primary continues up these conveyor galleries. There are dual conveyors that bring both coal and shredded bark and wood to the boiler.
Now with the door replaced and bolted tight, the mill is brought up to 92% load, and we can now see the raw coal feed through the viewport. The coal contains 7% moisture and has 13,000 BTUs per pound. The raw coal drops down the stainless steel feed pipe into the pulverizer. Control of the coal feed rate is by the Williams microcomputer, which sets the feeder rate to exactly match the boiler demand signal. Each Williams DF mill is equipped with a tramp metal throwout. By opening this large gate, removal of tramp metal and hard to grind materials is accomplished. This is normally done periodically. Hard to grind particles such as iron pyrites, slate, and gravel will accumulate at the bottom of the fluid bed and can be dropped out of the system as needed. In addition, should it be necessary to empty the feed chute or mill for any reason, opening the gate and jogging the mill will do the job. The pulverizer cross-section, shown here, has a large access door through which journal assemblies are easily removed for yearly maintenance. We show here a shop view of six mills under construction at our plant. The mill to the left has its cover and journals removed, while the mill to the right is complete with spinner separator. The journals are free to roll over uncrushables and pivot back out of the way. There are no springs or spring controls. The hot gases are conveyed to circular bustles, which we call wind boxes. These wind boxes surround each pulverizer, and they introduce air equally around the periphery so as to fluidize the coal and dry it and convey it up to the active classifier we call a spinner separator. Because of the active classifier design, sieve analysis for the pulverized coal remains constantly at 90 minus 200 mesh. At high or low loads, there is zero 50 mesh oversized. Pulverized coal and air rise into the separator, where spinning blades force the heavier particles back down for regrinding at the mill zone. From the splitter valve, two pipe runs are used to transport the pulverized coal to each burner. Each pipe run has a coal flow cutoff valve, which is driven by an air cylinder. These valves are always closed when the pulverizer is shut down. This Foster Wheeler burner is equipped for coal, number six oil, and gas fuels reducing the turbulence in the inner annular region nearest the fuel while directing the major portion of the air to the outer annulus lowers the flame temperature and NOx.
left, you see the switch, switch yard with the coal and loading facility, rail and loading for coal and limestone, coal storage facility, reclaim, conveyors up to the boiler facility. Coal being received by bottom dump rail cars. Uh, the cars are positioned by a car puller, unloaded to uh, underground hoppers. The material then is transferred by belt conveyor up to a transfer point where the material can either go to the boiler directly or stacked out to a storage area. The material then can be reclaimed from the storage area and transferred back onto the conveyor system and transferred then onto the boiler. As you can see, some of the coal is a little bit larger size, probably four to five inch. Conventional crusher mechanical feeder system, this mill would probably be shut down now because of the moisture content those surface and inherit in this type of cold feed. We're told it's running 18% moisture as you see it now. This system is designed to handle about 15% moisture, which means we could use a little bit of auxiliary heat. Preparation for the new fluidized combustors has proven to be a significant problem. Moisture contents of up to 15% to 20% can and do cause binding and plugging in primary and secondary reduction in fuel feeding apparatus. Here the fuel is fed by means of a standard weigh belt or gravimetric feeder in the 2x0 format containing normal moisture contents of up to 18 to 20%. The pulverizer reduces and dries the fuel to a product size desired. The final product size can be changed while in operation. Limestone is also fed into the center of the DFM system. The limestone servant is recovered from overhead storage by means of a vibratory output conveyor at the bottom of the bin. This product then drops down into a variable speed screw conveyor, which takes the precise dried limestone and meters it into the center of the DFM mill located on the floor directly below. 
absorbent demand is a direct function of the s o two as being measured at the outlet of the stack Mixture then of fuel and sorbent fall directly down this central chute into the DFM mill located directly below. Multiple fuel outlets, as shown here, allow uncomplicated fuel splitting. A combination of coal and limestone therefore then land in the center of the DFM system landing on a feed tray supported by the spider. The solids are spun off centrifugally into the upward rising airstream. Pre-sizing takes place at this point and material that is already to size is caught up in the airstream, thereby bypassing the grinding elements. This pre-stripping of product helps minimize oversized grinding and the generation of extreme fines and results in lower horsepower per ton. The coal is crushed entirely by rolling contact between the roll and bull ring. For a circulating fluidized bed combustor, this is the world's first direct firing fuel preparation system. The Williams ring roller mill direct firing approach gives excellent control over particle size analysis coupled with drying, mixing, and distribution of the fuel and sorbent. The vertical shaft is driven by means of an external right angle gearbox and drive motor through couplings. The motor is connected to a variable frequency drive so that the vertical shaft speed can be varied from 0 to 100 percent speed. With the bottom discharge as shown here, beneficiation can be incorporated with the removal of impurities, pyrite or tramp metal and this is accomplished with the bottom mill discharge. Automatic lubrication is accomplished while the system is running. Multiple outlets can be supplied so that even distribution of coal can be made to the CFB. Due to the rotational speed of the DFM mill, the swirl imparted to the rising air through the wind box area and the limestone and coal particles are evenly mixed and transported to multiple outlets. The two DFMs and is split into four sections, one to each of the side walls of the combustor. The coal is very, very simple. It comes up and is blown in essentially at the end of a, of a, of, of a pneumatic pressurized pipe blown in on a slight negative dihedral so that it promotes mixing with the upcoming fluidizing air coming off the grid down below. For the purposes of obtaining a representative sample, a typical cyclone coal sampler is utilized on the outlet duct. The D50 is now 934 microns, so it's basically laying right in here on this material, nice coarse granular material. These are the fines, 18 mesh, 50 mesh, all the way down to the 100 mesh shown here, and this is minus 100 mesh. And there's only 11.8% minus 100 mesh with a D50 of 934. And the 
majority of the water removed. The sludge then is transferred by belt conveyor up to a surge bin where the sludge is metered into a conveyor system and the conveyors then transport the sludge to the boiler building. This is a picture of the infeed conveyor for the de-inking sludge from the building. This is the largest volume of, of uh, recycled sludge burned anywhere on the face of the earth. This boiler is rated at 46% MCR on, on just the inking sludge. Uh, most units hold 4, 5, 6%. Uh, this one is, the, is, is obviously the largest made. What we're looking at here is sloughed materials that is about 55% the bottom of the cyclone uh, where it comes into a non-mechanical loop seal which is essentially a U-tube manometer. From there it is uh, additionally fluidized with 100 inch air for these lines you see here and then it mechanically goes back up which is part of the U-tube manometer effect and then it slides over a hump and goes down into the bottom of the combustor for the final recycle. Otherwise the pressure from the furnace would blow back up through here and would not have a differential pressure seal with the cyclone. Coming, what you're looking at here is the sludge feed points coming in by mechanical conveyor from the sludge press house next door. It's fed in and, and uh, is evenly divided into the two loop seals. The hot return material coming back from the cyclone is coming down through this loop seal at about 1560 or 80 degrees. And at that point, the sludge is laid on top of it to promote immediate heating, drying, and mixing with the hot recycle material. This is the secondary air inlet, which is used to pick up some heat by natural convection, conduction, and radiation off of the upper portion of the bottom ash hopper, which does not have a water-cooled screw. This is the first installation in the world without one. As you can see, it's not required, and the air is uh, picking up only a very, very small amount of heat, and is conveying that heat, along with secondary air, through this duct over to the inlet of the secondary air fan. This is all very conventional pneumatic ash pickup material where the uh, hot solids out of the bottom of the combustor, the rejected solids inventory, is conveyed pneumatically out to the ash silo for disposal in conventional pneumatic fashion. A sample of the coarse material that would come from the bottom ash drain on the combustor. As you can see, it's fairly small material. The ash is pneumatically conveyed to the top of this storage hopper, where it is removed at the bottom by a conventional dump truck to landfill. The building on the right-hand side behind the rail cars is the turbine generator room. Coming across is the power plant offices and control room, which is just beyond the transfer tower for the sludge and the coal. Then is the circulating combustion boiler by Pyro Power, which has the elevator here on the outside, it's extension. Then to the rear of the building is the entrance to the Savinska Flak Fabrican rigid frame precipitator, followed by the ash handling system and the large circular silo on the far side, the tan silo and the bricks the chimney for the, for the unit. This is the steam generator building where a 48 megawatt steam turbine and generator is utilized to provide part of the energy utilized by this plant. The uh, big object on the right is a HRSG heat recovery steam generator as its own stack of course. It's connected to a 40 megawatt general electric gas turbine uh, which the, on the left-hand side, the tan part on the left-hand side, are the inlet filters for the gas turbine. 
as a bridge crane over the turbine. Uh, and it is connected electrically through the proper distribution grid to the steam turbine, which is the building further to the left, just behind the switchyard, the gray short building in front of the boiler. These two turbine generators provide most of the electric power necessary to run this paper mill, which makes it essentially electrically self-sufficient, or energy self-sufficient for that matter. They have to buy coal, they mix the coal in with their own de-inking sludge. The de-inking sludge has a net heat contribu uh, contribution uh, uh, to the steam generation process in the pyropower circulating fluid ice combustion unit. Therefore, Southeast Paper is utilizing waste material, landfill material, to generate steam to produce energy to run this plant. The entire plant runs off of recycled waste paper, so this is really an, an, an environmentally friendly paper mill.